funding options at this phase. Uh, of course, now <clears throat> the key is to get sales, sales, sales. So the, the best, not only best funding option is sales, but it's also the stronger and stronger validation of your performance. And, and the more focus you have in sales and getting successful outcomes of that, the more opportunities you will have to any other finance instruments underneath that. But if you are in the market grabbing, uh, market share grabbing uh, business model and you are not even looking at the sales, which is if you have managed to capture really high uh, brand recognition named uh, VCs that are backing that up and, and, and you will have together committed into this such uh, risky scenario, really trying to grab the market share really quickly, then the sale, of course, is not the key. It will eventually become a key. You will at some point always need to make the sales work uh, at some point, or at least the organization or at least the product or service needs to capture on that, but maybe you have already made exit before that. But if you're not on that track yet, then it's sales. It will also help you to get even to that track. And no investor, if you already have a model that you are both scaling fast and you're making sales, would say, stop with the sales. That would be very unusual. Perhaps if possible still, but, but uh, that would be a very unusual situation. Um, so some accelerators are still relevant. Uh, or some accelerators are only now become relevant. So, so those that are really focused on that you are past product validation, that you are already on fixed terms and they are more accelerating you to, to, to get to higher level of growth or higher level of uh, investors. Uh, in Europe, Horizon 2020 SME instrument is a very relevant uh, product. Uh, there is no exact fact yet known whether it will continue or something will be replaced. But anyway, there will always be something under under the, the European Commission level uh, finance for growth. And then, of course, you have the same at national level. Depending on the country, you have different uh, finance instruments. But now also, before comparing to others, you get business loans become possible because now uh, most likely you have real revenue, you may have real cash flow uh, positive situation, or it's, there's clear visibility how you can re reach, to that, uh, reach that level. Uh, so that becomes a real option. Uh, business angel syndicates. So now also, in, instead of individual business angels, uh, maybe groups of them working together can come up with uh, still higher uh, investment levels. And of course, now venture capital becomes a real option. Uh, also, you can you can still tap into equity crowdfunding, and uh, and then later on the later scaling phase, then becomes uh, opportunities also with strategic investors and so forth. But uh, but that's that that starts to be more uh, business as, as usual. So the main main point is that. You have more funding options and the more you focus on uh, sales and the more you get to cash flow positives and things, the more funding options just become available. The more you can grow, the more you have funding options. The more you make sales, the more you have funding options. Uh, in context of uh, thinking of equity crowdfunding, because it's still it's been there for quite some time, it was still, still relatively new, I and mean, in many places it's still not even available. But it's really important to choose the right platform. So you want to choose a platform that has a good success rate, and, as, and, and therefore also some platforms have uh, criteria. So most of the good ones have. So research first, and if you get into the platform, that's anyway already a certain level of credibility for you as well. Uh, research first, then compare, interview, uh, top options. Uh, if you are in that position that you have multiple options where you can do that, definitely follow their tips for successful races because that's, that's the main thing. That's what they do. 
that's what they help companies to achieve. Uh, and, and the success is in simplicity of potential good pre-work, lead investors, contact leads and media coverage. So uh, the types of companies that are specifically, the types of companies, businesses and offerings by those companies that are good fit to this uh, platform uh, raising opportunities is that are simple uh, for the audience to understand, that there's relevant uh, audience to be reached also through that platform in addition to their own contact lists that you have, and potentially like customers as an investor type of thing. And really the good pre-work, like doing it like a professional approach and really preparing, thinking of this, uh, the rounds attractiveness. Uh, then if getting like some uh, lead investors, some business angels or syndicates already kind of to commit to make investments uh, through that platform as well, then you get the whole, the whole thing moving and uh, having contacts list uh, of relevant investors and audience that you can reach. And of course, if it's a product for real need in a market that is easy to understand and you have good traction, uh, also it's not too hard to get media coverage. Uh, and so if you haven't yet uh, leveraged that too much or you have good things, when you do a next step uh, organization growth, you can potentially get good coverage from them as well. So pre-plan and then make effective uh, raise and make the first one attractive to be successful. So don't overprice it, don't put rather try to raise less money with more attractive deal and valuation and then do another round with higher valuation than trying to do a bigger round with, uh, uh, with not so attractive, so too ambitious and uh, uh, to ambitious valuation level, uh, try to avoid that because first and foremost you want to be successful in that raising uh, when it's more public and visible like equity crowdfunding is uh, and rather maybe get more money and need to repeat it than fail and then, 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 then you have less opportunities after that. So make that, make that a, a uh, attractive opportunity. And then the, the difference between comparing why would you do equity crowdfunding versus why would you do like VC funding, uh, uh, the opportunity if you are successful with equity crowdfunding is that you as a company set the terms for investors. So you decide what is the valuation, you decide what are the rights and, 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 and opportunities of investors who choose to invest. It's all you, you make those decisions and they have only option to choose whether they want to invest with those terms or not, that's it. The difference with VCs is that it's a negotiation and oftentimes they push a lot of terms that you would otherwise not necessarily want, but in return you may get their brand, you may get their channels, uh, also exit opportunities and so forth. So there's always a pros and cons in both. So it's not necessarily that one is better uh, than the other for every single case, but it may be that something is clearly more better for certain type of business than another one. Uh, but you need to be able to do this uh, strategic com comparison for what's good for your business and your plans and your mission and your own personal uh, perspective as a co-founder, what you would like to get out of that. <clears throat> when it comes to uh, attracting venture capital is that the build channels to them, don't, that they don't want to meet you, they want to be introduced to you. So the more you can uh, get this, that someone actually, someone that they trust and know mentions about you and refer them to you, you already have much stronger position and they are much more interested than submitting any form or meeting them in any event, even if they are looking to make investments because you just want to get as good as a start as possible. Uh, other, other things in VC process, uh, pre-marketing. So really do research, find the most fitting investors, uh, spend enough time to, to check. So you need to check things like 
do they actually have invest in uh, active funds under investments at the now so that they can actually make investments so that the fund is not closed or that they are not in process of raising another another fund uh, so that they have actual finances to, to make the types of investments they have made before uh, what entrepreneurs that they have invested think about them uh, perhaps write in the blogs or maybe you can reach out to them in LinkedIn or social media to, to discuss uh, that the industries that they are investing the strategies and the support that they are providing and then build list uh, of including uh, previously invested companies and and uh, also the, the reach out in the in investors but really it's like a pre-screening them and then targeting only those that where you from all of the communication they have put out and the research you have done that you clearly see that this looking at your DNA canvas that this would be a great fit for us have enough of them in your list and now you have like your target uh, VCs that you would like to uh, go after so then the next step you go to actual fundraising so this is pitching introducing uh, and trying to make this uh, into fixed periods fixed period so now in the research phase if you have contacted those entrepreneurs and I hope you have to discuss um, then you say that we are working on this and we are considering uh, raising a finance when we are in, the, in that, that phase and we are ready to do it uh, and then would you mind doing an introduction for us at that time and probably as entrepreneurs helping others they would say yeah if all things are okay I'm happy to make that introduction when the time is right so now you have the the, the right type of entry to start with um, with the investors. The, the reason you want to make this fixed period is, is you should treat it as a process with the beginning and the end and measure your progress and, uh, and steps in between. And then of course hustle like when you have actual funding that you are now raising when you say we are now raising this is this is what we're looking for then use that time also to try to find any additional things that you can introduce to that plan process. And then of course the target is to actually be able to raise that funding. So, so when you look at this upfront and then you plan it, and then you look at if we execute this plan, how likely it is that we will succeed with that exercise together with your team, if you look at that well, if we in reality do all of these steps, it still looks like it's very unlikely that we're going to achieve. Then consider if there's anything that you can improve with that, change the targets, lower the expectations, uh, whatever that may be, but get to the point where at least theory you feel that if we execute this in this way, then it is likely that we will get a positive outcome then you can consider is it 50 50 30 70 whatever that be but if you can't believe it in practice then why would you ever do uh, if you can't believe that in theory why would you ever do that in practice so don't count on just being lucky um, look at it evaluate it and if when it feels that's the best plan you can come up with uh, you can get external perspective to it then execute it or then consider well maybe this would be more fitting to an equity crowdfunding platform or maybe we still should look at some other options to, to, to get loans or some other things to really improve our numbers to be more convincing. Um, then once you or if you already have uh, secured investors, angel investors and so forth, make sure to communicate to them the good things, the bad things, the challenges, uh, the strategic questions, uh, the strategic decisions in a periodical way um, and not just leave them into dark and then come to them two years later when you perhaps would like to get introductions or need more money or the company is in in bad shape and you need more money or the company is in good shape and you need more money don't let them into leave them into dark uh, keep them updated find a natural way to communicate with them 
uh, here's a here's a, a format by uh, Brenda Mulligan about very simple format, a few key sentences, sentence summary of email in paragraph of bullet points. What to communicate? The, the organization growth perspective, team and recruiting uh, perspective, so the HR of getting more resources, product, so the offering, key product releases, upcoming developments, um, what is happening there, media and press, what has been written about, anything relevant that helps to kind of bring more awareness, and visibility, and then have that for, for investors to read. Uh, metrics, Again, the, the same ones that you use at the top level and, and then communicate those systematically so then they learn to read into those and they can follow your performance more easier. Runway, this is how much time we have until we run out of money or we hit cash flow positive. Uh, what are we planning to raise more? Um, and this is, of course, for the perspective of investors. Typically, when you put the company in an investment track, so you take angel investment money or you take a seed finance in an equity point, you most likely have committed to following that track a couple of rounds further because it doesn't matter if you succeed. If you, if you are unable to catch profitability, you need more money to be able to continue to be able to do whatnot. Whether you're successful is a, sec a separate question. If you succeed, most likely the investors and others, and you have agreed to this when you took their money in the first place, would say, okay, let's try to accelerate the pace to be able to do so. Let's find more money and do even more and capture even more market share. And, and, and you do that. If you are not growing as fast, or if you are not failing and you are on average, the question would be again saying, if we would, what do we need to fix that we can capture a faster growth curve? And then you would reiterate, raise again more money. So if you go into investor track with this mindset, then you need to be communicating and telling when are you planning to raise more money? because you just will use that to grow and even go faster. And you have probably read about, um, uh, followed some of the companies that they have just raised like 200 million uh, for something and like it's like now they have plenty of money for, for several years to come. They still have more than half of that or in their bank account and they have not used and then they come up and they say we just raised 500 million. And it may sound like, well, that doesn't make any sense. Like, why are they raising more money? Because they already still have money and they still have runway and all of that. But the whole point may be that now they want to send a signal to the market that we want to own this market position. We are going to grow aggressively. So good luck with anyone who wants to grow past us or they want to show bigger muscle uh, to existing status quo company and, and their customers to say, hey, welcome to, 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 even if you consider that there's risk with this new company, we now have 500 million more money, so you can start to trust us like that uh, dinosaur, dinosaur on, on, on there and, and there are other signaling factors. Or it may be a situation where raising money now is considered better option than three years later because of whatever can happen in politics or financial cycles and it's better to secure more money to be able to live longer than just three years for sure so tools and resources so getting to the towards the end of the the, the module uh, summarizing first that the growth phase is all about scaling, multiplying all required things that are validated to work in most efficient manner while having clear methods in place to actively measure and validate the scaling process and overall progress. So this is really summarizing the key essence of what the growth is about and all of that we have covered are the methods, tools and rationale.
behind how to consider the, the growth phase. But you can't really enter the growth phase if you don't have done the previous development phase. Or it's much, much harder to do the growth phase. At the same time, you cannot do growth with same methods how you have got to this point. So now if we really look at from the uh, simplified perspective of startup development phases overall, from the very beginning to the to the to the very mature phases, and we recap the different phases. It really comes down to to these uh, these essential key things. You need to come up with idea that you need to validate. From that, you need to come up with team that can execute on that idea. You have to attract and inspire team members to join. And going into the validation phase, now you need to create a product and you need to validate the product. And at the same time, you have to start creating a business model to go along with that product and offer it. Now you have a beginning part of the team, you need to validate whether that beginning part of the team is the right team to actually execute this, whether you need to change and improve the team. From there, you start to move into business, business validation. So not only business model validation, but the whole business validation, including all the support, all the other products and services, the business as a whole. And you start organization building. So at the growth phase, it's all about validating the entire business from multiple aspects, finances, uh, operations, process iteration, strategy, operation balance, KPIs. And you're trying to same time when you're validating and growing that business, you are uh, building the organization and you are validating the organization constantly in ongoing basis. And then of course your team commitment validation continues with every single team member joining and the ones or 